professional here. Uh, as a professional, Prabhuji holds a master's degree in system science and automation from the reputed uh, IISC Bangalore. He worked uh, at Ford Motors and TCS Innovation Labs uh, as in the capacity of researcher, published 10 papers and a patent. As a monk, yeah, he took uh, the order of monkhood in 2009 after a spiritual initiation from uh, His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj. Uh, he joined the Gordhaniko village in 2010. He has been instrumental in establishing Bhaktivedanta Vidya Peet and has been leading the intense two study two year study course uh, in the traditional bhakti literatures like Bhagavad Gita, Srinath Bhagavatam, and uh, Sri Chaitanya Chaitamra. As an author, uh, Prabhuji authored more than 30 books. This includes the Subodhani series uh, for systematic study of holy scriptures, Prava series of storybooks, uh, self enrichment books like uh, Answer to Life Questions and Disapproved uh, But Not Disowned, and children books like uh, Gita Wisdom Tale and Bhagavatam Tales. They have sold more than 1.5 lakhs copies. He has a special love for uh, scriptural verses and he has also compiled uh, shloka books like Gita Ratmala and, and many others. He, he also monthly uh, authors a e, e magazine. He runs a e magazine called Bhagavat uh, Bhagavat Pratipika. And as a teacher, Prabhuji has uh, has been uh, teaching people online and offline to all the age groups, adult and children. Uh, he has also like you know more, given more than seven thousand hours of spiritual discourses so far. So we are really blessed and uh, thankful to Prabhuji for joining us today. And like you know, it's our fortune that Prabhuji agreed to give a exclusive session for all of us here. Uh, and let's loudly, loudly chant, maybe while being on mute, uh, three times, Hari Bol, to welcome him. Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol. Thank you, Prabhupada. Grateful. Hare Krishna. I hope I'm audible. Yes, Prabhupada. Yeah. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Agnana Timiran Hasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Velitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Nama Om Vishnupadaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvisesha Sunyavani Paschatya Deshatarini Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Sri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. One second. Hare Krishna. My humble obeisances to all the devotees. We have assembled for today's session from Hyderabad. Uh, today we will discuss the glories of uh, Bhakti Yoga, the glories of Lord Krishna, who maintains all his devotees with so much of love and affection. Uh, so I was not given a specific topic. I was asked to speak on something general. <laughs> Uh, that may be relevant to all the devotees who participated or are participating in this event. So, there is a beautiful shloka in the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, Ananyas chinta yanto maam yejana paryupasate tesham nityabhi yukta naam yoga kshemam vaham yaham. Ananyas chinta yanto maam means devotees who do not think of anything else, who do not get distracted by anything else, but take full shelter, exclusive shelter of Krishna, are taken care by Krishna in various ways. Yejanaha paryupasati. Upasana means worship. Paryupasati means very perfectly, uh, nicely, committedly, dedicatedly worshipping Krishna. Right? Without allowing our mind to get distracted or diverted towards anything else, 
if a devotee worships Krishna, serves Krishna, what does Krishna do to such devotees? Okay, what is the benefit or result of uh, full surrender to Krishna? Krishna explains so beautifully now. Yejanaha paryupasate tesham nitya abhiyuktanam yogakshevam vahamyaham. For such devotees who are completely dedicated to worshipping me, yoga kshemam vahamiham, I take care of their needs. To be more specific, Krishna says, I supply whatever my devotees lack and I preserve whatever my devotees have. Okay. Whatever we have, Krishna will preserve, will protect. Whatever we don't have, Krishna will provide, he will supply. That's what Krishna says in this shloka. Okay. Now, uh, yoga kshemam vahamyaham is understood by different people in different ways according to their preferences or, or, or the expectations. So yes, definitely uh, what Krishna said is correct. Yoga kshemam vahamyaham means he will preserve whatever we have and he will protect, uh, he will supply whatever we don't have. Uh, however, this yoga kshema words have other meanings also. You know what are they? Yoga means our attempt to connect with Krishna. What is yoga? To link our consciousness with the Lord. That is yoga. So when Krishna says yoga vahamyaham means he will protect our spiritual inspiration to connect with him. Whatever eagerness or enthusiasm that we show to connect with Krishna also comes from Krishna. Right. Our inspiration to practice Bhakti Yoga also comes from Krishna. When we are eager to serve Krishna, then it is Krishna who arranges guidance for us. Now many of us, or at least some of us, were not in devotional path sometime back, isn't it? But somehow, we came in contact with some devotees and slowly, gradually developed some inspiration to serve Krishna, isn't it? But who arranged the devotee association for us? It's Krishna. <laughs> so our coming in contact with devotees of Krishna is not a random happening. It's not a random event. It's orchestrated by Krishna personally. He must have seen some sincerity in us, some genuine desire in us to connect with him. Some genuine eagerness in us to search for the absolute truth. So Krishna will somehow bring us in touch with some devotees and then gives us an opportunity to progress in bhakti, to come closer to his feet. Right? So yoga means our attempt to connect with Krishna, linking our consciousness with Krishna, linking our heart with Krishna. So that is yoga. And Krishna uh, protects our yoga. Means Krishna will help us, support us in our connection with him, he will facilitate our relationship with him by arranging his devotees, by arranging the necessary support and guidance uh, for our spiritual lives. Krishna is taking care of our yoga. That is yoga, our attempt to connect with Krishna. Then what is Kshema? Kshema means Krishna's reciprocation with our attempt. Right? So yoga means our attempt to go to Krishna Kshema means his reciprocation with our attempt, means the prosperity that he gives us, the protection that he gives us, that is Kshema. Right? Many of you are from Andhra, Andhra, Telangana, uh, Telangana, right? Whatever, Telugu state. Yeah. Yeah. When, I left, when I left Andhra, it was one. <laughs> now, last 15 years, I am in Mumbai side. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, in, in Telugu language also, Kshema, Kshema, you understand, right? <laughs> it is protection. Right? Krishna will arrange protection. He will only inspire us to come closer to him. When we go close to him, he will only protect us. Full match fixing. Krishna does all this. <laughs> right? He is too expert in bringing people closer to him and then he will maintain them also nicely. Portion. Uh, so, now there are more deeper meanings to this shloka. Many more. Uh, let me tell you a story first. Hello. See, philosophy becomes easily digestible when you hear a story connected to that. <laughs> so, one story. Once there was a great devotee named Arjunacharya. He was writing a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. 
So he wrote commentary on several chapters and he eventually came to this ninth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. He came to the 22nd shloka and he found this shloka. Ananyas chintayantomam. And he came to this line. What is this line? Yoga kshemam vaham yaham. So when he came to this line, he felt, how come Krishna carries the burden of the maintenance of his devotees? Right? Yoga means our connection with Krishna. Kshema means his protection to us. The prosperity that he gives us, the protection that he gives us, the way he maintains us, right? And Krishna, after saying yoga and kshema, he said two more words, vahami and aham. Vahami means to carry, right? I'm carrying this mouse, okay? Carrying. So, uh, Krishna says that I will personally carry the burden of the maintenance of my devotees, right? Vahami, aham, he said. Aham means I, I will personally do it. I will not outsource it. It's like, uh, there is some, for example, somebody comes to your home. Some very important person comes to your home. Then will you tell your servant or maid servant, ah, go and call him, ah, go and bring him inside. Will you tell that? If he's a very important person, if a postman comes with a courier, you may tell your servant uh, or your child or little boy, just go and collect the courier. But if a very important person comes, you will not tell your servant and go and uh, receive him. You will personally go and receive him. He may carry some luggage. Then you will immediately go in and pick up that luggage with your own hands. You will accompany that person. You will open the door for the person. You will open his car door and you will make him get down and you will open the home door and you will take him inside. You will offer him seat. Right? If he is your guru or some very important person, you will even wash his feet. Right? And you will, whatever small thing that he may need, you will personally make arrangements, right? Aham, I, Krishna says, a devotee is VIP for me. No one is as important as my devotee, Krishna says. Yoga kshemam vahami aham. When a devotee wants to connect with me, I will personally carry the burden of the maintenance of my devotees. Right? Vahami aham. Aham means I. I will not outsource it to Devatas. Indra, Chandra, Varuna, Vayu, Brahma, Shiva, Anarda, you take care of this devotee. He doesn't say, he doesn't outsource it. He doesn't outsource it to his energies or expansions or Devatas or servants. He will personally come. Right? That is his love for his devotees. Yoga, Kshemam, Bahami, Aham. So when, when this line came, this Arjuna Charya who is writing a commentary on Bhagavad Gita, he felt, why should Krishna carry the burden of the maintenance of my, one of his uh, devotees, why he has to take care of it personally? He has so many servants. Actually, Arjunacharya uh, did not exactly doubt Krishna's intentions in saying this shloka, but he kind of felt a bit uncomfortable. Why should Krishna carry burden of maintenance? Uh, no, no, no. I'm not comfortable to receive service from Krishna. He should not do it personally. He should outsource it to somebody. He should delegate it to somebody. So, uh, he has he has cut off that line. He stroke it off, right? Then, because he sat thinking about that shloka, uh, he there was a delay in his going out for begging. So generally, his practice is just before lunchtime he will go out to beg from different houses, right? Some some food, okay? So this is this Brahmana. He doesn't work. He doesn't have a corporate job. <laughs> He's a simple Brahmana. He would just survive on the begging that uh, he does. So that day he went out late. By the time he went out for begging, so all the people in the neighborhood, they already ate and they emptied their home, emptied their vessels and they washed them also and they were sleeping. They were taking rest. He is not getting much. He's going from door to door. Meanwhile, his wife was alone at her home. So this wife was waiting for the husband to come back. So, but husband did not come back. He was searching for more food uh, to get some food. Then two little boys came. So they knocked the door and she opened the door. And she found two little boys. One who has dark complexion. Another has a fair complexion. And uh, they were carrying so many food items. So uh, this, this lady asked the boys, who are you? Why are you coming to our house? Why are you bringing all these items to us? Then they said that we are the disciples of Arjunacharya. 
we are fruits with us so we are supposed to deliver it to you so you please accept this items and give the empty baskets to us otherwise your husband will punish us he will beat us uh, so you should do it quickly there should not be any delay in it then she said okay all the story is good but one point i didn't like in what you said my husband is never so cruel that he would punish innocent children like you uh, he will never punish then the boy said no he punishes he is very strict Uh, he is extremely strict. He has great expectations from his disciples, uh, from his servants. See, and the dark boy especially, he turned uh, his back towards this lady and showed some marks on his back. And she was surprised. My God, my my husband, uh, uh, like punished you in this way. There were marks on your back. So she felt uh, very awkward and very embarrassed. And then she called the little child inside and applied some chandan on those marks. And said, "Don't worry, my dear child. Uh, your marks will go away. Uh, your pain will go away." And she accepted the grains and she started cooking. And the boys left, and she cooked, and she started eating also. Meanwhile, Arjuna Charya came with a, with empty hands. So whenever Arjuna Charya comes home, his wife would come out respectfully and then receive him nicely. But this time she was indifferent. She was not coming out. She was not giving any water to wash his feet. Uh, she is sitting and eating. So generally, her practice is to feed her husband, and after he eats, she eats. But this time, she is not doing all that. She is not even getting up. She is not even receiving him with uh, uh, with mild words, with gentle words. She is sitting and eating indifferently. So Arjuna Chere saw her behavior, and he also saw so many grains and vegetables and fruits lying there on the uh, in the in the home. So he had two questions. Question number one. Where did you get all these ingredients for cooking? Second is why are you so indifferent to me? Why your behavior is changed now? Then she said, "Yeah, your disciples only brought these uh, food items. You only have sent uh, all these ingredients with your students, right? Yeah, they have brought sincerely, but I am indifferent to you because I didn't like your behavior. You have punished two young boys." The little children is it appropriate to to beat them like that? You make them do so much hard work for you. You make them carry so many items for you for your maintenance for your family maintenance, and you are beating them. Then Arjuna Charya was very surprised. He said, "No, I never sent my students with food items. Uh, they are not my disciples. And uh, how do they look like?" She described. Uh, one was dark. One was fair. Uh, they both are like very small children. Then Arjuna Charya felt something, and then he went uh, to the uh, room where he was writing the commentary, and he saw Yoga Kshema Baham Yaham. He has striked up that line, right? So again, the line manifested. Then Arjuna Charya understood. Oh, the boys who came to our home, the boys who gave darshan to my wife, are Krishna and Balara. So. He went and told, congratulated his wife. You are so fortunate. Uh, you are so fortunate to have the darshan of Krishna and Balram. But I did not have that fortune of seeing them because I did not have faith in what Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita. Yoga Kshema Bha. Amiham. I did not have faith. I have striked off Krishna's words. Such a great offense. Of course, he didn't mean to offend Krishna. Uh, but he felt, why should Krishna carry the burden of the maintenance of his devotees personally? No need. So, but, but uh, uh, Krishna proved that uh, I will definitely carry the burden of the maintenance of my devotees. So, to prove his words true, Krishna did this. Now, Krishna is not obliged to prove himself in front of anybody and everybody. He does it only with sincere devotees. Right? Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita, "Naham." Prakashah sarvasya yoga maya samavrta means I am not obliged to reveal myself towards anyone. So some people, uh, whenever I appear in a human form, some people underestimate me. Uh, they don't take me seriously. Uh, but I am not obliged to prove myself to them that I exist. If they don't believe that I exist, let them be atheists. Not a problem. I am. I don't have. 
uh, any inclination to just go and uh, uh, convince them, right? So I have enough fan following. <laughs> I don't need anyone else to. Uh, uh, so in this way, Krishna uh, uh, carries the burden of the maintenance of his devotees personally, right? So he proved himself. Now Arjuna Charya got this faith. Uh, now let's go deep into this words. Yoga Kshemam Bahamyaham. Krishna will personally take care of the maintenance of his devotees. That's the meaning that we have seen. Krishna will supply whatever devotees lack and Krishna will preserve whatever the devotees have. That also we have seen. But if I don't have a car, Krishna will supply a car to me. If a devotee does not have a big bangla, Krishna will supply that bangla to the devotees. Or if, if a devotee uh, has 100 acres land and is doing business, he may get into losses. He may have to sell out 50 acres of land and retain only 50 acres. Will Krishna do the needful to protect the 50 acres land? Not necessary. Although Krishna said, I will preserve whatever my devotees have and I will supply whatever my devotees don't have, not necessary that Krishna will give us the money that we need uh, or, or Krishna will provide us with the material facilities that uh, we lack or Krishna will preserve the material prosperity that we have. Property that we have. Not necessary. How many times you have? Pure devotees, elevated devotees of Krishna struggle for some food. So, he is a great devotee of Krishna. But he does not have poha. He does not have one dhoti to cover his body. His dhoti has 100 holes and he would put a knot. Probably he did not even have a needle and thread to you know, stitch it properly. He would just put a knot. So, entire dhoti was filled with knots only. Okay. And kuchayilam uh, marilam kshanam kshamam dvijam dhamani santatam means all his bones are visible. He was so emaciated, so thin. Okay, Sudama. And uh, Pandavas were there. Pandavas, uh, although they are exalted devotees of Krishna, close associates of Krishna, darshana, sparsha, samlapa, shayanasana, bhojanai. So devotees are into mm -hmm. taking darshan of Krishna. Which Pandavas had close darshan of Krishna. They were seeing Krishna, darshana, sparsha, they were touching Krishna, samlapa, they were conversing with Krishna, shayana, they are sleeping with Krishna. Asana, they are sitting with Krishna. Bhojane, they are eating with Krishna. So we have six loving exchanges with other devotees, but the Pandavas were having six loving exchanges with Krishna directly. Right? So that is uh, their position. So these Pandavas, how many difficulties they had to undergo? Their house was set on fire. Kunti Maharani says, Vishan Mahagne Purusha Dadarshana when he was a child. Mahagnehe, and they were about to be burnt uh, to ashes. Mahagnehe, Purushata Darshana. They also encountered some man eating demons. Human eating demons like Hrimbas or Bakas or Bhima killed them finally. Shan Mahagne Purushada Darshanat Asat Sabhaya in that Asat Sabha in that bad assembly uh, where so many gamblers and uh, uh, heinous people were there, heinous people were there. Draupadi uh, was insulted. Dushasan tried to disrobe her in public. And Krishna, of course, came and protected. But so many things happened like this. Purushada Darshanat Asat Sabhaya Vanabas. How many difficulties they faced in Vanavas? Vanavas Krishnataha Mridhe Mridhe Aneka means repeatedly so, uh, so many uh, Maharathis and Atirathis they were showering Arjuna with hundreds of weapons. Right? It's so like that the kind of difficulties that Pandavas faced in their life were really unlimited. Pure devotees, if Krishna is really Yoga Kshema Mahamiham, 
वही पांडव फेस सो मेनी डिफिकल्टीज वही कुंती महारानी फेसेस सो मेनी डिफिकल्टीज वही द्रौपदी इज सफरिंग सो मच वही सीता देवी सफरिंग सफरिंग एंड सपरेशन फ्रॉम लॉर्ड रामचंद्र वही राम हिमसेल भी सफरिंग राइट चेक डाउट ऑफ अयोध्या राइट एट द सेम मुहूर्त एज इज पट्टाभिषेक सो वी सी दैट द यूनिवर्सल हिस्ट्री द स्पिरिचुअल हिस्ट्री ऑफ दिस यूनिवर्स इज फिल्ड विथ द स्टोरीज ऑफ डिव Devotees who underwent so many difficulties, despite having unlimited devotion for Krishna, and how is the statement of Krishna Yoga Kshemam Bahami Ham justified? Now Yoga Kshemam Bahami Ham, if you read that line, you may think that Krishna is such a great protector. He will preserve whatever the devotees have. He will supply whatever the devotees don't have. It's very nice to hear Yoga Kshemam Bahami Ham. But uh, apart from Arjuna Chari's story, how many stories are there where? Uh, this this statement is justified and how many stories are there where this statement is kind of compromised in one sense apparently so the answer is very profound very deep and not very straight forward also so krishna said yoga kshemam vahameham but many of the readers of bhagavad gita they forget to notice they they fail to notice a small star About that yoga kshemam bahami ham, and if you notice that star, that star will point out to the footnote. Star condition supply, right? Star condition supply. You see, sometimes there are big boards. Ah, fifty percent discount, seventy percent discount, but there is a small star. Fifty percent in big letters, you know, ten feet big, and star is just like one inch small. <laughs> so that star, and if you see terms and conditions apply, right? And if you see the conditions, ah, uh, only when you purchase. When you only when your purchase is like beyond uh, you know ten thousand rupees or twenty thousand rupees, fifty percent discount is applicable, right? Only when you have so and so card, SBI card, or I don't know, I don't have any cards now. <laughs> uh, only then, only then it is applicable. Uh, only if you are a regular customer of of uh, that that home and that that showroom, uh, you have been purchasing from them for last three four years, then they. Will give a discount. So there are so many terms and conditions apply. Here also, Krishna said, "Yoga Kshema Mahamiham Star Conditions Apply." <laughs> you know what are the terms and conditions of Krishna? Uh, Ananyas Chinta Yanto Maam. You see, first three lines are proper conditions. Generally, when you put a star there, conditions are given at the bottom. But Krishna kept the conditions first and then gave the main statement. Yoga Kshema Mahamiham is in the fourth line, the bottom line. And on top there are three lines. What are they? Ananyas chinta yanto maam. Don't think of anything else except me. Then second, ye jana ha pari upasate. Pari upasata. Upasana means worship of Krishna. Pari upasana means perfect and complete worship of Krishna. Right? Ananyas chinta yanto maam pari upasate. Right? Two things. What is the third line? जन्माष्टमी डे nitya means every day regularly constantly consistently so krishna is expecting perfection in worship and consistency in worship you should worship perfectly not once in a while you should consistently do it daily so three conditions are already set in the first three lines and in the fourth line he is declared yoga kshema mahamya okay so fine uh, coming back to the examples that we discussed kunti maharani pandavas Draupadi and many Ambarish Maharaj, uh, then Chitraketu Maharaj, Dhru Maharaj. So many people are there, right? So many great pure devotees are there. They fulfill the first three conditions. Right? Bali Maharaj, Sudama, <laughs> right? Suklamar Brahmachari. They all fulfill the first three conditions, right? Star conditions apply. All terms and conditions that are applied are fulfilled by them. But still, Yoga Kshema Mahami Ham. Did it work in them? When in their cases? Sudama is definitely Pariyupasate. He is doing and he is uh, 
perfect worship daily he is like shravanam kirtanam but uh, uh, why he does not have even little poha in his home why he has to beg that poha from a neighboring house even to take it as a gift for krishna why his dhoti has 100 knots 100 holes so did you ever think about it why his body has his rib case is visible so much right so it's like a skeleton with a thin bed sheet on his body that's how his body looked like there is hardly any flesh there is only hardly any fat so that's how emaciated he was so although first three conditions terms and conditions are fulfilled still yoga kshema mahamyam is not happening in the case of some devotees did you ever think about it <laughs> so let me uh, clarify the last line more you know what is that i will supply whatever you need and i will preserve whatever you have you know what i supply whatever you need for your bhakti but although you want it if i feel that you don't need it for your survival in bhakti i will not give it getting it right this this is made very easily this is this can be easily understood with examples i'll give examples also so krishna will not supply whatever we need uh, or whatever we want or whatever we don't have krishna will supply it to us only if he feels that it is required for our advancement in bhakti and krishna will not preserve whatever we have krishna will preserve it only if he thinks that what we have is useful for our bhakti if he thinks that what we have is not useful for our bhakti he will take it away from us if he thinks that what we don't have is not needed for our bhakti he will not give it us give it to us even if you ask 100 times right so we need to trust krishna's integrity and intentions so a sincere devotee is one who never uh, doubts krishna's integrity who never doubts krishna's intentions what never doubt krishna's intentions or integrity that's important so apparently a devotee sir put in certain circumstances where the situation is very unpalatable very uncomfortable very difficult to survive so krishna will put us into such situations but those situations are tests for our faith so krishna is testing our faith how faithful we are how loyal we are how dedicated we are krishna is testing us right so we should pass the test sometimes when there are difficulties in life devotees may may lose their faith in krishna i am worshiping krishna since one year two years i am chanting hare krishna since years five years but nothing is happening i'm not sure. see from the product of your chanting right or are getting a lottery or getting good marks in your exam are not the products of your chanting or your bhakti yeah you may get them if krishna desires but but uh, there is something more that a pure devotee aspires for so material prosperity may be required for our survival in this world but it should not be the ultimate aspiration of a practicing devotee right and krishna will never give it to us if he thinks that we don't need it if he thinks that having material prosperity will distract us from our bhakti if i make him very opulent and very wealthy he may forget me krishna feels insecure <laughs> to keep it in a lighter note <laughs> he may think that oh this devotee if we give him so much of wealth he may uh, he may lose bhakti he may get distracted from bhakti so let me not distract this devotee okay if poverty is beneficial for this devotee to stay in bhakti let me uh, keep him poverty stricken forever but if wealth is required for him to practice bhakti peacefully i will give him wealth also okay so let me tell some examples kusudama's example for example so sudam was a poor brahman okay but although he is a very nice devotee exalted devotee elevated devotee there is one problem with sudam all of you know sudam right so sudam definitely was a nice devotee but he had some pride 
he was a little proud. Not so proud like uh, Duryodhan, but some little pride. Thought asa. Okay. And why is he proud? He was proud of his own detachment. He is thinking that I am very renounced. I don't need a proper dhoti to wear. I am so detached. I don't need food to fill my belly. Actually, Brahmanas are supposed to beg. Means they are allowed to beg. So he can always go out, beg some food and fill his belly and feed his family. But he is a bit stubborn. He is saying that I will not beg. If it comes on its own, then only I will take. Otherwise, I will not beg. So, he is attached to his detachment. Many people are attached to their material prosperity, wealth, money, status, etc. But Sudama was attached to his detachment. Okay. So, uh, Krishna thought, I have to make him humble. It's a long story. Uh, maybe another time we can discuss the details of Sudama's story. But now, I will just give it only as an example for this current concept of Ananyas Chintayanta Vamshloka. So, Sudama went to Krishna and Krishna gave him unlimited wealth. He did not reveal it in Dwaraka. So, Krishna came back, sorry, Sudama came back to his home and he didn't find his small hut. What did he find? He found a big palace. And from that palace, his wife came out lavishly decorated with all kinds of ornaments and she was a queen and Sudama was a poor brahman, a wife was looking like a princess and then Sudama entered the palace and continued to live there in an opulent bangla. But uh, why did Krishna give him wealth? You may quote this as an example of yoga kshema Mahamyaham, but Krishna gave wealth to Sudama to humble him. Oh, you are so detached, uh, you are so detached that you don't have money, uh, you, are, you are so attached to your detachment Okay, you are so proud that you don't have money and you, are, you, you don't want money. So, I will give you money. I will give you wealth and make you humble. Right? By giving wealth to Sudama, Krishna made him humble. Krishna destroyed his pride. Okay? So, on the other hand, we have Bali Maharaj. You know Bali Maharaj? Uh, he was the grandson of Prahalad Maharaj. So, Lord Krishna went in front of Bali Maharaj in the form of Vamanadev, small Brahmana boy. And he said, Bali, I just want three steps of land. And Bali offered the three steps of land. And initially Bali said, you are a small boy. What is good for you? And you don't understand that you can't do much with the three steps of land. Because the boy said, I want only three steps steps of land with the measurement of my steps, not your steps. And the boy is so tiny. His steps are this much only. And Bali thought that these small steps, that are only three, what will you do with it? I can give you one island. I can give you one village. I can make you the king of my, uh, half of my kingdom. Uh, I will give you gold. I will give you silver. I will give you so much. Then the Lord said, you may uh, be very charitable you may be inclined to give as much charity as people need, but I should just focus on my need only. If I am not satisfied with three steps of land, I won't be satisfied with three worlds also. So, just give me three steps of land, sufficient. Then, our Balimara said, okay, fine, take three steps of land. And within two steps, Vamanadev occupied the entire universe and asked where is the third step? The belly said, put on my head. Now I have a question for you. If Vamanadeva has occupied the entire universe within two steps, within the universe only Balimar is also sitting, right? If if entire universe is required to cover two steps of Vamanadev, one little head of Balimar is it sufficient for the third step? <laughs> the answer is simple. Property and proprietor are always different, right? Say you purchase some 100 acres property from some landlord. And the landlord is sitting in the, standing in the property and says, okay, take this, uh, take this land. Will you go and say, you are also mine only. You are also standing in the land, right? Land is mine and you are also mine. You will become my servant. No, right? Property and proprietor are different. So you occupy the property and the proprietor is always away from uh, the property. Right? Proprietor will not become your servant. You cannot occupy the proprietor. You only occupy his property. So the Lord has occupied the three worlds, 
the property of Bali Maharaj and the proprietor also he wants the proprietor also. You, you also become my servant. Then uh, Bali Maharaj said, put your third feet on my head and then the Lord put and then accepted him also. So in the case of Sudama, the Lord has given so much of prosperity to Sudama. Then you may think the Lord is Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham. But in the case of Bali Maharaj, he has taken away all all the property. I will preserve whatever you have. Whatever in fact he although Indra was king of heaven, he is a devata, king of devatas, and Bali is a demon, king of demons. Still, the Lord uh, saw that Bali is a better devotee than Indra. But he is giving all prosperity to Indra, Yoga Kshama Mahandra. And in the case of Bali, the Lord has taken away all his property. Why is this contradictory behavior? Basically, the Lord saw that Bali Maharaj was a little proud of his uh, charitable disposition. He was thinking that I am a Mahadatha. Okay, I am very charitable. He was thinking like that. The Lord wanted to humble him. Oh, you are a great uh, Data. Uh, you are a great charitable person. Okay. I will prove that you cannot even give three steps of land also in charity. So, Bali Maharaj gave three steps of land in charity and Vamanadeva proved that Bali Maharaj does not even have three steps of land with him. He said, Bali, you have given me a check and that got bounced. You don't have sufficient bank balance with you. <laughs> so, what kind of charity is this? Uh, too much. So, he kind of... Uh, 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 humbled him, humiliated him in front of everyone. Okay, So this is how the Lord uh, destroys the parade of his devotees. So the Lord destroyed Sudama's pride by giving him wealth. The Lord destroyed Bali's pride by taking away his wealth. Right? Because pride is an obstacle in one's bhakti. If one has pride in the heart, Garva in the heart, then Krishna will do the needful to destroy that Garva, destroy that pride, so that we come closer to Krishna. Right? So apparently it seems that Yoga Kshemam Bahamyaham statement is true in the case of Sudama and not true in the case of Bali. But it is not a truth. In both cases, although Krishna's dealings with the devotees are opposite here, but the fact is he dealt with them equally. He destroyed the pride in their heart. So, Sudama was proud of his detachment and Bali was proud of his charitable disposition and Krishna gave wealth to Sudama and destroyed his pride in detachment and Krishna took away all the wealth of Bali and he uh, humbled him. He destroyed the pride in his charitable disposition. In this way, the Lord is supreme well-wisher of all living beings. Yoga, Kshemam, Baham, Yaham. So he will supply whatever you need only if it is really required for your bhakti. And he will preserve whatever you have only if it is really required for your bhakti. But he will not supply whatever you need or whatever you want if you if he thinks that it isn't, you don't need it for your bhakti. And he will not preserve what you have if he thinks that it is not required for your bhakti. Whatever is required for our spiritual advancement, that only he will give us. It's like a small child goes to the mother and says, I want ice cream. I want ice cream. Mother says, I will not give you. Right? Mother is supposed to take care of the child. But the mother is not even giving ice cream to the child. Because she knows that if he this fellow eats ice cream, he will catch more cold. He's already having cold and cough. So I can't spoil his health by giving him more ice cream. So that's why the child, he, um, child's desire is not being fulfilled by the mother. But if the child goes to the shopkeeper and gives whatever, 20 rupees, 30 rupees, 50 rupees, I don't know the cost of ice cream now. <laughs> so he just gives that money and the shopkeeper will just give, ask him, take this. Because for the shopkeeper, money matters. For mother, child's health matters. Right? So mother gives whatever the child needs for his health and not uh, whatever child wants. But the shopkeeper is different. So we cannot have a temple, you should give me a car. I gave you bananas to you on, on Sunday in your temple. 
Uh, give me lottery. Okay. Get a protection. You should work like that. If Krishna thinks that it is still advancement, that only he will give. Okay. So, we must, as our mother, as our father. Tvameva vatsa shriya bhritya vatsa lammu mukshu bhirmrugya prajya padhatim. Ananya bhave nija dharma bhavite manasya vasthapya bhajasva purusham. Mother Suniti told Dhruva, her son, whatever you need, you worship the Supreme Lord. Because he will fulfill the needs of a devotee in such a way that the devotee advances in bhakti and not degrades in bhakti. So the Lord is well-wisher. The Lord is supreme well-wisher of all his devotees. So you see there is another uh, episode. If you go to Vrindavan, there is a fruit seller. So she brought some fresh fruits and she started announcing in the uh, streets of Vrindavan. If anyone wants fresh fruits, you can come and collect from me. Then Krishna, who was hardly a two-three-year-old boy at the time, he wanted fruits. And he has seen his elders. Whenever they want fruits, uh, they the fruits will offer fruits. Right? It was not rupees or dollars in those days. Okay, So Krishna saw his elders doing that. So he also picked up little few grains in his little hands and ran very enthusiastically, very eagerly uh, towards, uh, towards uh, the fruit seller. But by the time Krishna reached the fruit seller, hardly any few grains were left in his hands. Already his hands were... very tiny to the top of it he was running and on the beautiful charming face of krishna and felt that who oh, i don't need his grains i want to see him smile she accepted the grains and she filled krishna's hands with fruits and as many as he could hold probably the number of fruits that she has given to krishna were more than the number of grains she received from krishna okay so, uh, she gave so many fruits to Krishna and Krishna accepted the fruits and her basket was filled with jewels, as you know the story. Now, the lesson is that this lady, was she greedy for the jewels? You know what she did? She went back to her home, got more fruits and gave it to Krishna. Not that <laughs> he will give me more jewels. He was thinking that if I give fruits to this boy, he will smile in happiness. And I just want to make Krishna happy. Seeing smile on Krishna's face, making Krishna happy is the only objective of a devotee who serves Krishna. No other material expectations. When we serve Krishna so selflessly in this way, Krishna will take care of us. Yoga, Kshema, whatever he needs. Otherwise, he will not give us. right? So, we don't have to worry so much about our maintenance. Yes, we need to do the needful with God-given intelligence to survive in this world. That's fine. But it is Krishna uh, who takes care, who carries the burden of the maintenance of his devotees. Provided we have complete faith in him, complete faith in his intentions and integrity. Okay. Now, you see the example of uh, Avanti Brahmana. There is a Brahmana named, uh, he, his name we don't know, but he is staying in Avantipura. So this Brahmana uh, was very miserly. He has a lot of wealth, but he is very miserly. He not give anything to anyone. So he has a lot of wealth and he wouldn't use it for, your, for his relatives or worship or even for himself. His relatives left him and uh, he lost all his wealth. Uh, so all the friends and family members also abandoned him. Then he realized, my dear Lord, I was so attached to my wealth. Now you made me like a poor beggar. So uh, uh, you are my only shelter. I don't have any other shelter other than you. So by
taking away all the wealth of Avanti Brahman here in his Bhakti. Right? So, the main lesson is that Krishna will supply whatever we need for advancement in Bhakti. Krishna will preserve whatever we have if it helps us uh, advance in Bhakti. It's not a flat statement where Krishna says, oh, I will supply whatever my devotees don't have and I will preserve whatever they have. So whatever they need for their advancement in bhakti, for their spiritual life, that I will supply. Okay. So these are the intentions of Krishna. There are unlimited such stories and lokas that we can quote to substantiate this wonderful concept of how Krishna is the supreme well-wisher of his devotees. Thank you very much. Shri Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. Any questions or comments? We have eight more minutes. <laughs> to discuss. If there are no, no questions, then we can complete the call. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, while we conclude this, uh, we all had one humble request, like, you know, whenever Next, you are in Hyderabad. Please, please plan to visit us if that is possible. Uh, that was our phrase. Sure. Sure. Next time, whenever possible, I'll just come. <laughs> Hare yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dhanush Pranam. Prabhuji, I can speak. I can hear you. Hare Krishna, I can hear. You can speak. Prabhuji Krishna, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, Prabhuji. So, uh, so in the first three conditions, like star mark is there, Krishna told like those things. Atiji, can you type the question in the chat? You? Can you type the question, Mataji? Uh, in the meantime, we can take some other question. So how can we take it? Is a karmic reaction we are going it, or Krishna only fill up uh, ful fulfilling our desire in this way? So there is two things like Krishna is giving uh, this thing, though we are not consistent in our bhakti or perfection in what worships or remembering Krishna, but still he is um, fulfilling the desire. So it is it is kind of uh, karmic reaction we can take. Uh, it is going towards a bhakti, or Krishna is fulfilling because it is needed in our bhakti. I didn't get the first half of the question. You're asking, is it bhakti or karma, something like that? But I didn't get the initial part of the question. If you can repeat it. Atali, yes, can you Prabhuji. type? Yes, Prabhuji. Prabhuji, my question was, few times we desire something uh, and we, we receive it. So how can we take it? It is a, it is in the, in this verse, like uh, we are not consistent in remembering Krishna and all. So how can we take it? It is a karmic reaction. We receive it or it is, Lord is reciprocating with our, uh, it this thing. Both, depending on our consciousness. Ultimately, nothing can happen without Krishna's sanction, right? The quote unquote karmic reaction that you are talking about is also arranged by Krishna only, right? So devotee's perception is, whether it is happiness or distress, everything is an arrangement of Krishna in my life. Even the karmic reaction, the reaction to our good and bad deeds, that is also arranged by Krishna only. What is law of karma? It is law of Krishna. It is the law of karma is created by Krishna. Therefore, it is Krishna's arrangement by which we are experiencing happiness or distress on a material plane also. Without super soul sanction, we cannot even get material distress also or material happiness also. So, the more we are advanced in bhakti, 
the more we will see Krishna's hand in all circumstances of life. And it is only by Krishna's grace and Krishna's arrangement then we are advancing in bhakti. If you are merely saying it's all karma, destiny, fate, uh, and what is that? Work is worship. Whatever uh, good things we do, we will get results. Where is God? So that's karma, mamsa, philosophy, and all. Huh? There is no God in picture. There is no Krishna in picture. I am working hard. I am getting results. People attribute it to their own, their own work. But uh, a devotee does the same work, may get similar reactions, but he will attribute it to Krishna. Krishna arranges it for us. It's our consciousness change only. Right? So karma, we can see it as a result of our past misdeed in a karmic thought process. But we can see it as awarded by Krishna in a devotional thought process. Okay? So this devotee has this devotional consciousness. A materialistic person has karmic consciousness. But whatever it may be, it's ultimately arrangement of Krishna. But only devotee can recognize it. We cannot recognize it. Okay, Next question. Abhishek Prabhu, would you like to answer? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, uh, you told that uh, Krishna gives us uh, whatever we need for the spiritual advancement. Right. But Krishna, uh, there are many people who have these kind of things, let's say wealth, right? A lot of people who have these kind of things mm -hmm. and they are not devotee of Krishna or they are, they have nothing to do with a spiritual advancement or anything. So, uh, what is the reason that they are given uh, such kind of thing? Uh, why Krishna uh, gives them all these kind of things? Which uh, which he doesn't give to the people or to the devotees who he wants to be advanced in spiritually. Why Krishna gives material prosperity to non-devotees? What's your opinion? Yes. Yeah. Why well, Krishna is giving prosperity to non-devotees? Devotees Pro are not practicing. prosperity, happiness, any such kind of thing. Okay. The reason is simple. They did some activities in the past, some pious activities, some good activities, and Krishna is giving them the results of their past good deeds. But currently if you do bad deeds, they will lose what they have now, eventually. And next life, they may get a more degraded one. It's like, simple, very simple. Say, somebody studied very nicely in plus one and plus two, intermediate. Okay, in other language. Okay, intermediate, they did very well. They got seat in a very, very good engineering college. So as a result of their past good studies, they got seat in a good college. But in that good engineering college, they don't study well. They will not get good entrance into uh, master's college. They will not get a good job in campus interviews. Right? So, the current prosperity is a result of past good activities. But currently, if one is not doing good activities, future will not be prosperous. So, they will enjoy the results of their past good activities for whatever time they are destined to enjoy and after that gone. Enjoyment is gone. Matter closed. Okay. Next one. Uh, uh, yeah, Hare Krishna Prabhu Gita Amrit Pranam. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for the wonderful class, Prabhu. Uh, and uh, my question is, uh, Prabhu, uh, when I read the Bhagavad Gita, then all time the condition is applied. Krishna, all the uh, things, uh, whatever is favorable for bhakti, and uh, uh, they all are for uh, for uh, Ananya Chintan to Maam and uh, the Shuddha Bhaktas for all. Yeah, yeah, uh, Bhagavad Gita is full of the condition apply. I, it is my realization. Uh, Krishna give every time uh, uh, he gives the condition. So how uh, here also the Ananya Chintyanto Maam three condition are uh, here uh, perfect and uh, complete worship of Krishna and regular uh, engage uh, worship in Krishna. So uh, how can we uh, in a practical way how can we achieve this conditions 
uh, uh, how can we achieve in uh, this condition? We are trying, but sometimes we fail uh, in this Ananya Chintyan to Mom and all the uh, conditions. Uh. Yeah, so what should we do? Way, most practical way of fulfilling these conditions is to be with those devotees who are sincerely attempting to fulfill those conditions. Basically, devotees association. Right? So when we see uh, more sincerity in other devotees than what we have, we should borrow their sincerity. Not borrow. We should take their sincerity by being with them. And by inspiring us, their sincerity will only increase. Okay? So sincerity, dedication are, are not... Uh, uh, destructible assets. If they have hundred dollars, if you take fifty from them, they will be left with only fifty. But if they have this sincerity and you take all that from them, their sincerity will be increased. <laughs> right? Their dedication will be increased. And by inspiring you to dedicate uh, to Krishna more, their dedication will increase. So this is only expanding. So by sharing, we gain. If it is a material commodity. By sharing, you lose. Uh, by giving it to others, your property will be reduced. But if it is spiritual knowledge, spiritual inspiration, by giving it to others, you will also gain more. Gain more blessings. So you need to accept it from others who have more sincerity. Right? I can see in your congregation only, in your group only, there are more devotees who may be uh, very sincere. So by seeing them, by associating with them, we can also collectively and individually advance in our bhakti nicely. Next question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji Dandar Pranam. I don't have a question Prabhuji but yeah, thank you for that analogy of Bali Maharaj where you told the property and the proprietor are different because the logical brain is usually the logical in, in a frame of reference of material things. I used to think that how it is possible that two universes are given and still he has something to offer because everything comes under universe. But that analogy uh, clarified that doubt that I had a long time, but I couldn't ask anyone. So thank you for the wonderful class. Looking for uh, more associations. Thank you. So what was it? You said I forgot. you said property and proprietor are two different things to offer. Uh -huh, correct. Yeah. <laughs> so I used, to, I used to think that how it is possible, but then I did not ask anybody this question because I thought it is in Sastras. I trust my guru. I trust Sastras. So maybe some perspective which I'm not able to understand, but it may be a very basic question. But this analogy and this line exactly clarified that how should we look at it from different perspective and understand that Krishna is still showering the mercy even if whatever he's doing. So thank you for that perspective. Next question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. So my... So my doubt was that many people have like, they have a lot of past karma, like it can be bad also. So what can they do to like uh, remove that past karma so that they can uh, like, they can they get some good karma? So, you know this loka karma ninirdha tikintu cha bhakti bhajaham govinda madi purusham tamaham bhajaham if we worship lord govinda karma will be burnt to ashes right good karma bad karma both will be burnt to ashes it's not that we are interested in good karma and we are not interested in bad karma whether it is good karma or bad karma ultimately it is material only and we have to burn it to ashes by doing bhakti. Karmani nirdahati. Dahati means burnt. Nirdahati means certainly, completely, perfectly burnt. Right? So, if you take uh, uh, some wet grass and try to burn it, lot of smoke comes and the wet grass will not be burnt completely. If you take some dry grass and then put one mass within uh, a moment, Right? So just like fire burns dry grass, bhakti burns any kind of karma. Okay? So by practicing bhakti, what is bhakti? By chanting the names of Krishna, by hearing Krishna's pastimes, you can practice bhakti and that sincere practice of bhakti will burn all the karmas to ashes. Okay? Fine. Tuvisha. 
Yeah, Prabhuji, I had, uh, I want to ask one thing, Prabhuji. Say, if we have a faith in Krishna, full faith we have, and if sometimes we have a problem in life, so how do we get motivated? Sometimes we get demotivated, but we have full faith. So is there anything that we get fully motivated and keep on uh, doing our things so that we can come out from it, come out from the suffering? Yeah, when we are practicing devotees, we are sadhakas, not simha purushas, right? We are yes. sadhakas. Yes. So, in the practice stage, sometimes our motivation and our consistency, our inspiration will just go up and down. Mm -hmm. And if that phases, down phases are intermittent once in a while, it's fine. It's natural, understood. But if it's long phases of demotivation, Longer periods of loneliness, longer periods of uh, uh, inconsistency, that's not good for our advancement. But if they come and go once in a while, it's fine. We understand because we are work in progress. But the point is uh, that you mentioned something very important. We have faith. Mm. But our motivation and consistency may go down once in a while, but we have faith. Yes. That protecting that faith is very important. We should not lose faith. The greatest loss is not losing one's bungalow, not losing one's land, not mm. losing one's money, not losing one's uh, property. Losing one's faith in Krishna is the greatest loss in this life. Mm. Okay. So we should not lose that faith. As long as that faith is there, although our consistency and motivation may go down sometimes, it will immediately resonate. It will come back soon. Right? Mm. Somebody uh, may walk on the road and they may slip, trip and fall down. And they have to get up, right? How will they get up? They will again take shelter of the road, of the earth only. Uh, mm. And then push, the, push themselves up, right? Mm. So because of walking on this road, I fell on the road. So I will not walk on this road. I will fly. Will you fly or not? We cannot fly, right? <laughs> so we need to take again the shelter of the same path. So similarly, while walking on the path of bhakti, sometimes we may fall and trip. We can't say, I will not walk on the path of bhakti anymore. Any other path? Back to Godhead, no other path, by the way, <laughs> for your information. <laughs> so better we walk on the same path. Mm -hmm. So, like we are sadhakas, right? We are work in progress. No construction is happening around me. <laughs> so, so many things are happening. I'm shouting sometimes. Uh -huh. So, when a building is being constructed, uh, the place is not very pleasant. When, in a Construction said you cannot peacefully go and sleep on your bed. So some people are coming with their stones and bricks and uh, uh, iron and cement and uh, rethi and all kinds of instruments and they're making sounds. The drillers are there, cranes are there, JCBs are there, poplines are there. My God, construction site is a big mess, right? So in that messy environment, you cannot peacefully sleep. But once the building is completed, Paint is there, done, flush is working, lights are working, electricity is there, then you can peacefully stay in the room. Right? Similarly, when we are doing sadhana, we are like work in progress. Okay? We cannot be peaceful. <laughs> Sometimes our motivation goes down. Our faith, uh, our, uh, our, our consistency goes down. We may feel like chanting today, and after two days, we may feel like uh, today will not chant. <laughs> we feel like attending so the consistency levels go down, but but the good news is it's work in progress. Ensure that work is in progress and work doesn't halt. Okay, work should just continue to progress. So while progressing, there are some sounds, unpleasant sounds. Sound. I'm hearing that sound now. Oh my God, terrible! I closed our windows here. <laughs> So construction sound is there because of this mic you are unable to hear, but I am able to hear. <laughs> My ears are open. So yeah, we just have to tolerate. We have to maintain hope in Krishna. Like we need to pray for consistency. We need to pray for motivation. Next question. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Thank you for the class. Uh, I have to start. Uh, so, we believe that if we commit any sin, in our next life we'll be born as an animal or any bird. But if in the same way, a Brahmana commits a sin, unconsciously or 
by mistake leave he commits a sin what will happen to him in the next life because he performs many kinds of bhakti and all he works in the bhakti way so by mistake leave he commits a sin what's hap- uh, what will be happening in the next life i have one question for you is that sin committed intentionally or by mistake by mistake by mistake if it is an unintentional sin krishna will forgive that person he will excuse you want a reference go to the ninth chapter of bhagavad gita read shloka number 30 and 31 krishna says api chet sudurracharo bhajate mamananya bha sadhureva samantavya samyag vyavasito hi sah when a devotee happens to commit a sin abominable sin but unintentional accidentally uh, incidentally uh, not purposely not in a premeditated way not in a uh, not wantedly right if he does a mistake by mistake then krishna will excuse that devotee krishna will will forgive that devotee and the devotee can continue the practice of bhakti right so and even if a devotee doesn't happen to uh, complete one's bhakti and become perfect devotee within one lifetime then also no problem krishna will give another opportunity to that devotee to continue the practice of bhakti in the next life he will ensure that this devotee who had incomplete practice of bhakti will take birth in a devotee family so that he can continue from where he left so in this life if somebody does btech and dies next life he cannot continue from mtech by the way <laughs> right so but bhakti is not like in this life you have completed your bhakti practice a 50% right and next life you can continue from 51% okay so there is there is a lot of hope and security in the process of bhakti okay there is nothing that does not mean we we wantedly commit sins uh, purposely we should not commit sins but by mistake if some mistake happens through us krishna will forgive us krishna will uh, krishna will uh, uh, excuse us and generally a devotee when he commits mistake he doesn't mistake uh, he tries to rectify it and he doesn't try to right he will not repeat the same mistake he will apologize for it he will admit for it he will pray for it he will try to rectify it so and he will repent he will sincerely repent and regret for it that sincere repentance is like a fire that burns all the reactions to one's sins the sincere repentance of a devotee and krishna's forgiving nature are sufficient to relieve the devotee from sin accidental sins but if it is an intentional sin yes then we have to experience some reaction fine thank you for the chief last question hari krishna prabhu you are now so i would like to extend the question of the sin which was asked earlier and uh, with some real time example that today morning i was getting a krishna book packed to give to some birthday gift and uh, uh, that guy asked me a question that hey why you are giving a krishna book as a gift and i told him that hey we are giving krishna to someone and uh, he said that you know hey you will give this book to someone but uh, uh, he will throw it somewhere and then he will get sin and all my question is that lot of people doesn't come to i mean they stay away from this whole spiritual matter or bhakti because of the sin so how should we take that that things and 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 this is a even that a, a, a regular question for the book distribution as well we may encounter so many categories of people while distributing books or while trying to reach krishna consciousness uh, however the bona fide candidates for uh, receiving spiritual knowledge are those who are innocent or ignorant not those who are arrogant if they are ignorant people you can educate them if they are arrogant people it may be or it will be difficult to educate them but so a person consciousness will have to deal with four categories of people in four ways 
ओके प्रेम मैत्री कृपा उपेक्षा प्रेम सच ए पर्सन लव दॉर्ड मैत्री ही मेक्स फ्रेंडशिप विथ रिवोटिस ऑफ द लॉर्ड कृपा ही विल शो मर्सी टुवर्ड्स इनसेंट और इग्नोरेंट पीपल उपेक्षा ही विल स्टे अवे फ्रॉम एनवियस पीपल एरोगेंट पीपल so when somebody is arguing too much and if it is beyond your capacity to convince them it's no problem let someone else who is better than us deal with them so let me just focus on some other people instead of showing the book and convincing one person for one hour to take one uh, on the way to krishna book <laughs> better show that book to 100 other people and at least 20 people will take in that same one hour right so just catch people who have simple faith who are innocent or who are you are hearted or at least who are willing to hear instead of spending so much time on convincing people who may not be so much eager to take us and may they may waste our time they may disturb our faith sometimes they may disturb our mood <laughs> right so better uh, avoid such people at this moment let them be dealt. you can pray for them that you can do you can give prasad to them they'll be happy many people when you give prasad they'll be happy some people they don't even accept prasad also that's their thing when once we were traveling in train and some beggar kind of person came so asking for some money so we took out one banana prasadam of the lord and then gave it to the beggar stood the prasadam and threw it in the train window so the prasadam went through the train like came for begging but they are not accept willing to accept anything other than money we don't want your prasadam we want only money just on our face only they just threw it into the window what can we do <laughs> So, well, no point uh, you know, trying to convince such people at this moment. Yeah, there may be some very pure devotees who can transform anyone just by their mere presence or to speak of speaking. But when we don't have that bandwidth, better, better move ahead and catch simple people. Okay. Thank you very much. Very happy to hear your questions. I think I found question answer session more interesting than the class itself. <laughs> Uh, next time we'll meet we'll have a nikki and day instead of uh, yes yeah. for the in person meeting i think there are going to be a lot of questions and thank you we are really really grateful for you i think uh, this is really enlightening talk thank you very krishna my humble pranams to all of you and my best wishes to all the children here and to all of you who are trying to spread krishna consciousness to the best of your ability in various ways very krishna thank you